I'm joined now by the technology writer and expert, Dan Sodergren. Dan, were you surprised by this ruling? Well, it's not necessarily a surprise. It's not the first time Google's had their uh, their, their knuckles wrapped, so to speak, uh, for doing something that makes them look a bit like a monopoly. We've got to remember, of course, that... Uh, you know, monopolies aren't good for consumers, but they're terrible for societies. Uh, and, and more deeply than that, if you actually look at what Google's been up to, that's how they've managed to get to something like, I think it's almost 90% of search uh, engine traffic in the globe. Not quite the same for over in America, which is about, but it's still very, very high. And so as the judge says, uh, it looks like a monopoly and, and it's acted like a monopoly. And so my guess is <clears throat> they are allegedly, should I say, uh, a monopoly in this case. So tell us how they did that. <laughs> well, a variety of different things. And let's not just say that Google's done this, of course. You know, every tech company seems to have a monopoly in certain areas, doesn't it? So Microsoft's been told off for this. Facebook has as well. Amazon has, and so is Apple, Apple being one of the players in this thing. And they seem to have a bit of a kind of a cabal going on. So they kind of swap things in and out. So, for example, Google paid Apple something like a billion dollars a month to become the kind of default search engine for if you're using an Apple product. Yep. Um, they did They did something very, very similar with a variety of different people, including Samsung and other people as well. And then other people in the tech world said no to those deals, uh, and they were kind of pushed out as well. And there's kind of a, a legendary thing that Google may or may not have done to make their dominance even more prevalent by even tweaking uh, different algorithms. But of course... That is not me saying that. That is an allegedly moment, and that is kind of a thing, a conspiratorial view. But, of course, the you know, the courts will decide this. Well, I mean, they were incredibly successful at doing that, though, weren't they, given that, you yeah. know, many people, when they see search, they just see Google. Well, the irony, of course, being, you know, if you want to find out about this, you'd simply Google it, wouldn't you? Uh, you know, and if you, you can't become a verb, most probably, without being, uh, being a monopoly. Um, but, of course, there are people like Bing that also have a search engine, owned by Microsoft, of course. But that's only about 4 or 5% of the search engine market. Now, this is interesting, not just for Google, but also for everybody else in tech. Because if the courts start to decide, and I think quite rightly, that monopolies are bad and they should be stopped then it's going to be fascinating to see in which areas as well, especially with artificial intelligence on the horizon. Because, again, there's a series of monopolies, or one or two monopolies that are happening there. And that's really important for the future of work because the companies that kind of control the future of technology and AI are most probably the, the companies that are going to control the way we think and the way we work in the future. So do you think we'll see these markets then opening up and uh, many operators there? Well, I hope so, you know, because, as I say, monopolies are not a good thing for consumers. Monopolies always don't innovate as much. They don't do things as well as maybe they should because they care more about their shareholders than said potentially about society. If you allow more rapid competition in the areas, I think actually every country should. Like, we should all have our own version of Google. We should all have our own version of Facebook, etc. And then you wouldn't have these companies with more powers than nation states kind of, you know, basically uh, doing what they want. You know, the old saying is... Uh, what do you call a 800 pound gorilla uh, you know in the corner where you just you call him sir and that's kind of <laughs> where we are with these tech companies they are so powerful they you know you got to remember these fines might sound like a lot but it's some it's something ridiculous like it takes google something like less than a minute to to make a million dollars so you might feel that there's a lot of money uh, here but actually it might only be 3% or 5% of what they're up to and so they might just look at this as that's just the price of doing business yeah, and we are going to talk about, just after this, in fact, about, you know, the kind of tech giants throwing their weight around and getting involved in all sorts of other areas. But how then can governments regulate them if, you know, they're big international companies? Well, again, this is the biggest problem, isn't it? You know, this is the 800-pound gorilla thing. You know, it's a bit too late. You kind of, you're meant to stop them when, they, when they're young, right, when they're a bit smaller. And we were meant to have laws in place that would stop this kind of from happening. Problem over with America, and I don't mean this in a disparaging way, but if they have a very lassie affair look at the markets and they don't, they just say, oh, well, people can regulate themselves and money is more important, you then get these monopolies that have trillions of dollars, which is great for shareholders, and I get that that makes money. But then when society starts thinking, hey, heck, aren't you meant to be doing stuff for us? They can easily turn around and say, well, we're here to make money. It's like Facebook saying, you know, that we've got to stop doing our social media stuff and become more of a policing state. Well, they're right. We, they, they should do. But are they going to? I think most tech companies will simply say, that's not ready for us to do. And of course, politicians now don't have enough power. So maybe we need to start thinking about this for the future, especially around artificial intelligence. We need to start thinking about this now rather than 10 years time when uh, we've got stories like this.
Okay, Dan, thank you very much indeed for your time. That's Dan Sodergren, the technology writer.